Um, and you follow sort of a, a familiar pattern, getting the Staff of Rain, um, the rainbow drop eventually to create the bridge, yada, yada. But um, a familiar trope that, that happens that connects, again, three to one. And you end up back at, at the old castle where it all began. Well, I guess where the first one ended. And um, we're fighting the true enemy, which is Zoma. But first, you got to get through that hell of a castle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, did you find... I mean, this is a pretty deep castle. With, I mean, you could farm in there and just get quite a few levels um, every time. Did you? What did you think about this end castle? This was not nearly as. Uh, yeah. This is my only gripe with Dragon Quest Three is that I didn't feel that same sense of like big, deep, intimidating, challenging cave. Mm. Honestly, the first game had that over the other two games. Okay, I agree. It, and so, like this one was kind of a breeze, like to to kind of find your way through. There was like a couple trap like staircases, you know, in the um, immediately when you go in, it's like you think, oh, maybe go down the stairs. And no, it wasn't. You actually just have to go around them. And then there's another one with some interesting floor panels and, you know, it messes with your directional input. So if you press up, you'll actually go left and then there's pits. So you like fall onto the bottom floor. Those were kind of cool, but I never had problems with them. Yeah. You know, once you figure out the trick, it's just kind of intuitive. The thing was the grind was real. Having to get to the appropriate level for uh, Zoma was intense. And especially considering your, you know, classes that you had and just everything in tandem. And two, you don't have a choice. You have your party and you're just going to grind and get them as high as possible. And three, you really begin to wonder, did I make the right party? Is, is there things I can do to improve them? You also need to keep in mind, are my equipments all up to speed? Do I have, like, did I buy with all the funds available to me things that I could, you know, selling the items, et cetera. And so by now, it's really just like you are really reflective of the entire party in a way that you weren't in the first two games. In the first game, you were like level 22 before you could defeat the Dragon Lord. Yeah. You know? And two, you just grinded the hell out of your way to get there. And three, it's more of like um, just being hyper aware of the party. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Three. I mean, three. And that's a credit to the fact that it's a big stat grind. But three, three stats matter, and picking the right stats matter because, and you have to actually actually pick them. Whereas in in two, I mean, every character kind of this character could use this item, and it's not like you're going to pick anything crazy because <laughs> because the prince sucks and he can use these set <laughs> items. Easy. And the princess of Moonbrook, whatever her name was, was uh, she had set items. And there was no real thought necessarily to, you know, itemization. You give her the best dress. You give him the best armor. You give yourself the thing that hits the hardest. And yeah. that's about where that ends. In this one, you have a wide variety. I mean, you could have a fighter. He doesn't use the same items as the warrior. You, you itemize those two differently, even though they are kind of, in a way, the same character. They just, the itemization is different. Um, you have characters, you have, you have a sage versus a mage versus a cleric. Uh, at a certain point, you could have a combination like that. So how do you itemize that? How do you itemize your, your other character? How do you itemize your hero? I mean, you might want to focus more on his spell power since you got that a, a warrior or a fighter that can do all the physical damage. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things change how you approach it, which was completely, I mean, one, there's like, five items anyway <laughs> like yeah there's nothing no choices there so this game you and the and when you do go through that gauntlet you start thinking about that like whoa i got wiped out um what could i have done differently like is my armor right like what is going on here um and so yeah you're totally right that the stats uh play much a much bigger role in dragon quest 3 than the other ones especially in the end game here it, but those leading monster units are not nearly as challenging as they were, especially in Dragon Quest II. Dragon Quest II just had monster difficulty, like, I don't want to say perfect, but to that level of, like, real high challenge. Dragon Quest I had that level of, 
um, like exploration difficulty, like, you know, really finding your way through caves and castles that had that really good. This one has boss battles that are, I don't want to say completely unmatched to your surrounding enemies, but that really require you to invest in grinding in addition to also having the best possible party. Um, and so that was a real challenge. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the bosses. Um, the mainly I want to talk about uh, the big dragon and then Zoma. And the big dragon, of course, kills your dad in front of you. This is the, the big moment. You've been searching for him the whole time. Even people here in the Aleph Guard have mentioned they've seen him. And of course, he's in the last dungeon. You find him, and he gets his own like battle cutscene, which is pretty bizarre. I I, I pre it's one of the I appreciate that they did it. <laughs> I'll say that it looks a little corny. It's not incredible, but it's amazing that they attempted it, and and I'm so impressed by it. And um, and then he's dead. <laughs> you remind you told me earlier to remind you of the moment where your birthday comes up. Oh, okay, yeah, hit me with it. So after this, uh, you know, this three headed dragon, you know, gets done dueling your father and you, you watch the whole battle go out and he tries to catch. This is crazy. So he tries to cast like mid heel a couple times and he keeps attacking him. I was half expecting to be able to join the battle and like fight alongside him. Yeah. Which would have been so cool. Fight alongside your dad. But that's not the direction they took, which is fine. I understand it. Um, he's casting mid heel and then you know, going on attacking the, the dragon. He tries to cast mid heal again, but he doesn't have any magic power left. Yes. And so then he just goes on, tries to keep attacking it after realizing he didn't have enough magic power. And then he just keeps getting attacked and attacked and attacked. And then you see your father just like collapse after this whole game of searching for him. And when you go into dialogue with him afterwards, he says, Oh, let, let you know can you hear me just please fulfill my last request let my son know you know find the child who was born on this date and tell him that his his father loves him and it's like oh my god there's that moment from the beginning of the game when you inputted your commands about what kind of character you are and you know when your birthday <laughs> is and like you know what's your astrological sign and you know that they came full circle and even yeah, though it, it didn't do it in a way that hit me in the same way that future Dragon Quest will, you know, four, five, seven, eight, eleven, um, six, maybe. I don't know. I have to play it. Um, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I respect this one for trying. It is. Well, and it's, it's kind of weird. Like, it's cool that they did that. But in thinking about it, it's kind of weird, like. You go into a town. It's like, was anybody born on January eighth of nineteen twenty three? I was. I was born in the Great Depression. <laughs> uh, but interesting moment. You, again, it's tragedy. Like you think that it's gonna be like you find your dad and you're like, hey, everybody's everybody's happy. We're alive. And then you hold his hand and run off into the sunset. Um. Hmm doesn't happen he's dead <laughs> so just kind of end i mean not the ends but that's it like he's good yeah that was the saga you found ortega <laughs> only just to watch him get murdered ruthlessly it was almost kind of like well i mean yes it was tragic but it was like is this a joke yeah you know that's kind of what i was thinking at that point it's almost like a freddy got fingered situation or something where it's just like they put this thing in front of you and just kill it like <laughs> like like oh like a story would normally especially at the time would be like oh you become you know you save him and you guys are friends now and he's like go on to fight zoma i'll be backing you up and nope just dead yeah <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of that uh you do end up fighting zoma and you go through a gauntlet of uh baramos and then a couple other bosses um and this is the final skill check man how was it uh first time i fought him i got my ass whooped uh, so, you know, I was, I was confused at first. So, uh, footnote, I completely forgot that you got an item called the ball of light and that you were supposed to use it on Zoma. Yeah. So the first couple of times I tried, uh, fighting with him, 
um, I just tried fighting, and I was doing normal damage, but when he would, like, you know, you go into the battle with him, he's like this big, hulking, priest-like figure, you know, evil-looking priest, and in the Super Nintendo version, you would watch the animation, and his jaw would drop, and his eyes would bulge. He looked like some kind of zombie or something, and he released this blue flame, and it would do, like, 300, 200 damage. Oh, shit. Or, like, 100 damage, and, you know, my party's HP was, at that time, like, maybe I had some characters with 300, Oh, gosh, I was getting crushed. And so um, I was like, dang, I really got to grind. And so, um, you know, I would put the, put some music on or podcast on. And I would I would go grind and, you know, fight some metal slimes and get some XP. Um, but then I just realized like, oh, I can use the ball of light on him. So I did. I used the ball of light. He says, wow, you found my weakness. You dispelled my shields. And that's when the real battle begins only nothing's different except a color palette change hmm. <laughs> so all the damage you do is the same all the damage he does is the same there are no differences as far as i could tell Wait, there um, weren't any differences stat wise no nothing no differences but um i made a executive decision to change my cleric into a warrior um after getting my cleric to level 37 because i wanted the revive spell all my other characters had Vivify, which has a 50% chance of working, versus Revive works all the time. And also, my Cleric was getting wiped out because the HP was like 200 at level 37, which was just not enough. And so I, I spent that. like a good two hours grinding, uh, maybe, and I got her up to 36 as a warrior, and she ended up being a beast. And I had like three characters with like 400 HP, and, and the battle was i wouldn't say it was a cinch but it was like i had it in the bag yeah um that would help a lot <laughs> um, you, oh you get um another item too i forget what it's called it's like a little bell you can ring it infinitely and it restores like 100 hp to all your characters so i was using that with of my sage gotcha gotcha um yeah he he does something that a lot of the people do in uh, in most dragon quest now which is constantly cast that move that undoes any stat bonuses right oh i get and it and sap didn't work either you couldn't lower his defense yeah and that we've talked about that before that's just kind of annoying yeah. um but he was he was a beast um and it, and it put it puts you in that constant state of well my ma my my people need to be using a uh, buy kill that was buy kill in our yeah, version. it's normally oomph, but oomph. in this, in our version, it was buy kill. It's like use rotations of oomph, and I think if you do some of that, it forces him to use that one that negates spells. I think sometimes he's smart he would just use it stupidly though. Like you didn't have any increases, and he would use it. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Because um, part of me was like, I guess I'll just use it to make sure that he keeps using it, but maybe it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Um, but yeah, you're constantly kind of fighting with the stats in that way. It's like a tug of war. Which is funny, um, yeah. and then he he does some pretty nasty AOEs. But yeah, he once you once you get a high enough level and you, you got some HP behind you, you can sort of keep up as long as you keep the healing up. But yeah, I love these end boss fights and all these dragon quests. They're freaking slaughter fest. <laughs> this was the first one that was not a two parter. Yeah, as well. All the other ones had a priest and then a monster. This was just him as the priest, but it was like the priest combined with the monster. Yeah, and I guess in a way it's it's similar because this one had the multiple. Um, oh yeah, it was like a boss rush kind of thing. Yeah, like a weird boss rush, which it's like you could have put these throughout the game and it might have been better. But I guess I guess I appreciate that they want to make the end really hard. Um, mm -hmm. But they were kind of forgettable. Really, we're just here for Zoma. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, you do beat him. Uh, let me read this epilogue real quick. Upon defeating Zoma, you, be, you may begin to make your retreat from the castle when the ground starts to shake, the floors crack open, and you fall into the ground below. Ironically, you are ejected from the fissure found in the lowest level of the North Cave, where you found the Shield of Heroes. You will make your way out of there, and as you round this corner of the staircase to the hallway, that extra hallway will crumble and collapse, leaving the dungeon in the same state it will be found in the original game. As you exit from the cave, it will seem as though, as though the whole back to your original world closed up. In fact, you attempted to cast return. If you attempted to cast return or use a wing of Wyvern, you'll find that your choices are limited to the five towns of Alifgard. 
Make your way back to Castle Tantagel for congratulations from the king and a victory celebrations from the citizens nearby. When the credits will roll until a final message appears on the screen to be continued in Dragon Warrior. Mm -hmm. A dragon orb Mm -hmm. will flash on the screen. Cycling through the six colors of the orbs you have to collect. Congratulations. There you go. There's the end of Dragon Quest 3. Woohoo!